Hey traders, Ragi here and in this free recap video, the last one for 2018, we're going to talk about crude oil, the euro, and also the bond market. So these three markets are, are pretty interesting and important to me because as we continue to segue into this D stage of the economy, you're going to hear me talk a lot more about this into Q1 of next year, we continue to still see slowing inflation and slowing growth. Now, a few of you have asked and left comments on previous previous uh, recap videos saying, hey, Rog, you know, where do you see growth dropping and where do you see inflation dropping? And, uh, you know, if you go back to high prints, you know, a lot of people saying, hey, Rog, the GDP looks better now than two or three years ago. And here's what I want everyone to uh, remember when I'm, when I'm looking at these GDP numbers. We look at the trend. We look at the trend in GDP. We look at how it's doing, you know, quarter over quarter. We look at the way in which it's moving in relation to the previous print. So where is my GDP here? Let's do the countries. So what I want everyone to remember when you're looking at GDP numbers, and I'm going to have to refresh this page. This is tradingeconomics.com, by the way. This is what I'm talking about. Yes, the numbers are way up here. Absolutely. And, and when, pe when people say, hey, Rock, what are you talking about? I mean, it's so much higher uh, than it was. And that's true. But what I'm looking at is the way it's shifting lower. Now, this is really the shift I'm talking about. Because this and this is a function of the elevated 4.2 print we saw because of the front running of the Chinese of the tariffs on Chinese goods. Look at the July print right back in here, actually just before July, and look at the change. Look at the trend we were seeing before this num number got just jacked up here, right? And then it's going to start moving lower again. Take that 4.2 out take that elevated GDP and then the subsequent number out, you can see the trend. And this was really an artificial boost. Okay, now, you don't have to buy that. You don't have to believe that. And that's okay. But this is what I'm looking at. Look at the trend, okay? Not the actual print. And again, if you look at this 4.2 and don't consider what China meant to this, you're really missing out on why we printed 4.2 in the first place. Okay? All right, so having said that, Crude oil, crude oil, euro, and bonds. These are all markets that are relevant in this uh, move into Q1 of 2019 and, and the trends that I'm looking for based on economic cycles. First of all, crude is going to be weak in this environment until the OPEC 1.2 million barrel per day cut starts to factor into global supply, which it may not. I mean, there's some chatter that OPEC's going to meet again and try to perhaps even raise that, but give this some time before we actually say it didn't work, right? Uh, it hasn't even really begun. The other thing is what's happening with shale in the U.S. With prices where they are right now, you're going to see that shale producers who are already, um, we have record numbers of what's known as a DUC, drilled but uncompleted well. We're going to continue to see these and we're going to see rigs come offline. We're going to see at this sub $50 level uh, less production. But again, these things will take time. I think we probably have most of Q1 and probably Q2, so Q1 to Q2, to continue to see this market head lower. By the time we get to Q2, we're probably also going to have the FOMC signal the market that they're going from neutral to dovish. And all that collectively should start putting a bottom in, not an uptrend, but a put a bottom in in crude. But I still think there's some lower lows we could see or at least some bounces and then return to the lows that we could see between now and the point at which the FOMC, OPEC, and the reduced shale production all culminate into a bottom in crude. All right, what else do I have in mind? Well, we talked about FOMC, so let's just segue on to the euro here. I am looking for more euro weakness. And yes, the dollar could weaken some more, triggering a little bit more bullishness in the euro, but I do not see any way in Q1 or Q2 that the ECB with a straight face could talk about turning hawkish. The data in Europe is worse than the data in the US. And realize 
that the FOMC is going from hawkish to neutral to dovish in the U.S. They're going to. There's just no way from a data perspective at current levels that the ECB could prepare the market for rate hikes. Maybe by the time Draghi retires, maybe in Q3, Q4. But again, I'm looking at a Q1, Q2 play of lower lows, not only in the euro, but in Italy, Germany, and France by way of the EWI, uh, the EWG, and the EWQ, which we're all short in. And that brings me finally to the 30-year bond. Now, 30-year and, and crude, if people are still wondering, is inflation dropping? Look no further than the juxtaposition of the 10-year of the bond and crude. I'm looking at the 30 here because I want to buy into pullbacks. I'm not going to buy into new highs. I would highly recommend looking at the 240 or the 480 and wait for a one-handle pullback. Into that one-handle pullback, if we can pull back into the wave on either the 240 or the 480. And the wave is really the more important thing rather than the one-handle. If they can converge, we get a one-handle pullback from the highs into the wave, that would be ideal. But I'm looking for that pullback probably in a longer-term intraday time frame to get long. All right, everyone. Happy New Year. Thank you for being part of the Simpler Tribe through 2018. Um, whether you are a member or not, I thank you. I appreciate your time. I hope these videos are adding some distinctions and some knowledge and some ideas. I wish you well for the new year. And until then, have a safe one. Have a fun one. Be good to each other. And I'll see you next year.